Hey guys, do y'all have a problem with a car that will sit and idle so low, when, especially when it's cold and it just won't stay running? Pull up to a stoplight and it wants to die? Well, this one here is a 2000 Nissan uh, Mercury Villager. And as soon as I put it in gear, well, it wants to die. You just, I'm, I'm actually holding on the gas pedal right there to keep it from dying. And one of the things is very slow response speed. The, uh, when you hit the pedal and when you put it in gear, look at that, down to about 600 RPMs. Oh, and it died. So there it went. Now, let me show you what the problem is and we'll get on to that. Pardon me out here in my carport. It's cold tonight. So my wife comes home, says he died on me five times. Here is the problem. Now this is a Mercury Villager 2000 model and it's 170,000 miles on it. And here is our problem. Now we thought maybe that this throttle position was the problem on it. But what you have inside of here is you have your, your flap for your fuel injection. This is your intake and inside of here you'll have that air valve that is for your fuel injection and it will close and will not stay open while it's sitting there idling because this will open and close and allow air passage through it into the engine. Now that's to control the idle at a set rate. You can see the screw is uh, still set on its mark and what we're dealing with right now, let me get a little bit brighter picture here. What we're dealing with right now is this little unit here. Now your car will have these in different places. They'll be underneath, they'll be, but they'll have a little motor that'll be on it and it'll draw that back and allow airflow through and then as you advance more throttle it will close that and allow it to go through the throttle body so let me show you what i'm going to do right quick i want to get it removed in this one's case it's just four screws on the top be careful removing so you can salvage or reuse your existing uh, gasket that's on it we'll show you the inside of it and how easy it is to fix this it's not the first one i've done look at that that's my breath Wow, cold out here, 20 degrees. All right, in this case here, just taking the drill, the impact, and I'll back out the screws. You see that smoky fog? That's my breath from the cold. Now, one of the, one of the things that you have to do is they're on there pretty good, so I've got me a set of pump pliers. These are pump pliers, they're not channel locks, and I'm just going to grab the body of it and rock it a little bit. There we go. Lost one of my screws there. All right. You can leave it plugged in. It's not going to hurt nothing, but you'll see when I look underneath it, you'll see what I mean. There's the holes. Now, you see all that carbon built up in there? We're going to take and clean the carbon out so that this thing can actually move on its own, and you'll see down here what it does. So it allows air up through those two holes and back down into that one to keep your idle. Just enough air for your engine to properly idle. Your engine will advance itself and that's plenty of air for an idle at about what it should be about 850 instead of 600 to 650. So I'm going to get this cleaned and it's really simple. We're just going to take, I'll hold them screws in this time, we're just going to take and we're going to go in there and using carburetor cleaner you can see how gummed up see how nasty that is in there it doesn't allow much movement so what's happening is instead of those two valves this one and that one on the end opening and allowing it through the center it's getting stuck and not allowing that through so 170,000 miles you can just imagine anything over 50,000 if you use bad gas like my wife chooses all the time you know the two cent a gallon cheaper stuff that's the result all right we'll get that loose and do a cleanup on it. Now, if you have to, you can cut the wires and use butt uh, connectors to put them back together. Same wire, same code. All right, now with it out and a rag over the top, you're going to look down in there and you're going to see, you get the uh, light turned on here, how nasty that is inside. It's pretty gummed up. A lot of carbon on that valve right there, that valve side. So. Might only be one side. Now, what I'm using here is direct injection intake port cleaner. Works really good. And usually the cause of all this is ethanol in the gas. 
So you'll see here, that is what's inside, not allowing this to fully function. You'll take Q-tips and get in there carefully and clean it. Don't leave many of the parts of your Q-tip in it. So you can see in there how nasty that is. So I'm going to flush it here onto the rag. You see all that nasty stuff coming out of there. That is the cause of your idle air control valve not working and you not being able to maintain idle in your engine. So especially on cold days where that thing really holds itself shut, you will have a lot of nasty stuff in here. And if you see right down in there, there's the valve. I don't know if you can see that. Right there is the valve that opens and closes. So when it opens here, it also pulls this one back and allows air in and then back out into the engine. When it won't do that, then you've got yourself a big problem because of the buildup. So we just want to get all of that cleaned out and use as many Q-tips as it takes to get that thing cleaned out. And you want to reach down in there deep and get it all out because sometimes they won't run right off the bat until they suck the loose stuff out of them as they're firing up and running. Sometimes I got about five miles down the road before it cleared up and just shake it around. And you'll see until it comes out clear, then you'll have it to where your valve will start functioning again. Try to shoot it at the angles of that valve that allows it to get airflow. So I'm going to continue to clean this and then just using a very light layer of regular RTV, very light layer, just wipe it on with your finger, just a film. You'll let that tack up, make sure you take a Q-tip and clean around the holes and mount it back on. Torque is about 25 inch pounds on 90% of them. The uh, foreign made models, um, it might be a little less. I know that Ford and Chevrolet and Chrysler products is only about 25 inch, inch, inch pounds of torque to put these back down. So you don't want to overdo it. But get your valve working again. You can also take a small screwdriver and work the valve back and forth. Don't push too hard against your motor so you don't strip that. And you can get it completely cleaned up to where it'll move freely. You see that movement? You see that second one right there? You see all the carbon on it? We got to open that up a little bit and spray that. And then this will work again and it'll idle without dying at a stop sign. All right, I'm going to get it mounted back on and we'll give it a test. All right, now with it back on, we have an engine that's idling right, sounding a lot nicer. And back over here, instead of it dropping down to about 600 and stalling out, it is now idling at, well, it looks like about 1,050, so it increased its idle. And there, it recovered, so now it's running at 800 like it should. There we go again, put it in drive, 800 like it should. So we gained about 200 RPMs, 150 to 200, and it's not loping, so I think we fixed it. All right, guys, and you can look at the mileage on that thing, wherever the mileage is at, 172, 415. Old Nissan uh, Villager Quest, whatever we call them, Mercury Villager Nissan Quest, same vehicle. So, oh yeah, and the, uh, response very very quick now compared to what it was very much improved all right so that's an easy fix that you can do be sure you get you a handful of q-tips and do not leave any of the fibers of your q-tip in there i had somebody uh, done that once and they couldn't figure it out we had to actually disassemble the whole assembly but it's an easy fix that is your idle air control, and it doesn't matter what model vehicle that you're using. They all have them now when they're fuel injected in one fashion or another. So just look it up on the schematic, find it, clean it. If you have over 80,000 miles, I recommend you do it. And the stuff that works the best, absolutely the best, and doesn't mess with the valve seals on that is this stuff. The Gum Out Direct Injection. So I'm not sponsored by these guys, but it works better than carburetor cleaner. 
So you see this over here? No, no, and no, no. Don't use that. Use this. All right, go get you a can. Kira? Yep. Guess who's helping me out here in the cold? All right, guys, y'all be good.